All right, so we're continuing on in our lecture series on Lagrangian optimization. We're basically trying to find an optimization technique for the consumer. We're looking at consumer behavior and trying to model how consumers optimize. Now we've seen consumers represented before in supply and demand curves, and we've seen their optimization approach with indifference curves, but now we're using mathematics to try and show that utility maximization. And in particular, we're going to use calculus and what's called the Lagrangian approach to utility maximization here. So first up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at unconstrained optimization. The basic model of economics is often all about choosing the best option from a set of alternatives. And formally, we refer to this as optimization. We're optimizing within these alternatives. Optimization can be constrained or unconstrained, but we can think of unconstrained optimization as constrained optimization where the constraints just aren't binding. That is where they don't really matter. Most of economics is really about constrained optimization. We have some constraints, we have a budget, we have these trade-offs that we're worried about. But sometimes we are making choices where our budget doesn't really matter that much. We're kind of unconstrained in our optimization uh, approach. So you can kind of think of the uh, spoiled child who can get whatever they want. There's really no constraints on their behavior, but nonetheless, they're going to optimize between their choices of, well, how many video games do they want and how much candy do they want and other things like that. There's no real constraints, but nonetheless, they can still optimize in their mix of what they're actually attaining. I mean, people don't want just infinite numbers of everything. Eventually, even a spoiled child gets sick of too much candy. So the question becomes, if we have a utility function, this is representing our consumer's preferences, and we have no constraints, how do we optimize? This is unconstrained optimization. We have our preferences and there's nothing holding us back from satiating these preferences to their absolute maximum amount. So here our utility function is, utility is equal to 400X minus 10X squared plus 100Y minus Y squared. What we have to ask is when does a change in X create no more benefits because at some point in time this first x term this idea that we have 400x that we get from each unit of x we get 400 units of utility is going to be offset by this second term and this second term is just showcasing to us the idea of diminishing returns sure we get 400 units for every x that we uh, consume but then also as we consume more and more and more the amount that we kind of take away from that 400 units is going to be decreasing right and so if we just simply have uh, 2 as our x then we would end up with 800 here minus and then we have 2 squared gives us 4 times 10 gives us 40 whereas as we increase X and increase X and increase X, we're gonna see diminishing returns really kick in. At some point in time, the value of X will be such that this term starts to outweigh the upfront term. So we're just showing diminishing returns here in our utility function. We're asking basically, how do we figure out when that second term completely offsets that first term when we get no additional value from an additional unit of x when does a change in x create no more benefits when does the entire front part of this equation here where all of the x's are involved end up zeroing out when do we get that zeroed out so how can we do this we can actually do this with calculus we can take a partial derivative. A partial derivative is a derivative with respect to one variable holding all others constant. So what would this first derivative mean? What would this partial derivative, where we take a derivative with respect to x, if we take the first derivative, what would this first derivative mean? Derivatives look at how much the outputs changed per change in the input. 
So how much does the output or utility change when we change the inputs of that partial derivative, the x variable in this case? So that's what we're really looking for here is we're going to use calculus. We're going to take a partial derivative and we're going to try and see when that derivative with respect to x, that partial derivative, has this input and output relationship that we're looking for. When we can get this point where this part of the equation ends up zeroing out and giving us no additional utility. So in order to find our optimization point, our technique is going to be to take the partial derivative with respect to the variable under consideration. So we're starting off with the variable x and we're going to see how does a change in x change our utility, right? And so we can graph this up as we've done here and we can see how does a change in x affect our utility. And we could go through and we could plot out all of the different points. If we made x zero, where are we at on this graph? If we make x four, where are we at on this graph? If we make x 10, where are we at on this graph? And so on and so on. And so this would be the chart that we would create. This would be the graph that we would have. And we can see here this function that comes out of this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to say, okay, well, we have to take the partial derivative here and we have to look at the first derivative. We're taking a derivative with respect to x and we're going to take the first derivative. The first derivative primarily tells us about the direction that the function is heading. That is, it tells us if the function is increasing or if it's decreasing. So here we can see in this picture, at this point that we have picked out, we could see that, hey, this function is increasing. It's continually going up, right? And so we could see that from this depiction. The first derivative can also be interpreted as the slope of the tangent line at that particular point. And so if it is positive, we're seeing this increasing element of what's happening in the function. So what we're analyzing here is as X is changing, as X is increasing, as we're moving to the right on this graph, what is happening to our utility? And at this point on our graph, we are saying, hey, it is still increasing. So our first derivative at this point would be positive. Well, what would it mean if we did the math and at that point, our first derivative was zero? What do you think? If our first derivative is zero, we are at either a minimum or a maximum on our function. The slope of the function is zero. And so currently, any change in x does nothing for you. It's not increasing or decreasing our utility. The input isn't changing the output at this point. Now, it could be a maximum or a minimum. But where the first derivative is equal to zero, we're going to call this a very special thing. We're going to call this our first order condition. We know this is a maximum given our function as we look at it, but we can also tell that from our second derivative. So we're going to have this first order condition be a very important element to our Lagrangian approach. But we want to kind of prove that we are maximizing consumer utility by further checking that, hey, we want to prove that this function has a maximum when we get this zero point. Because we could have a slope where the curve is trending downwards and then bending back up and the derivative could be zero. So we know it's a maximum from doing some further analysis from looking at the second derivative. So our second derivative will be used to kind of check to make sure that we are showing that consumers are optimizing. So let's go back through our problem here. So we have this utility function and we have an unconstrained problem. There's no constraints on our behavior. So all we're going to try and do is maximize the amount of utility that we can get from X. And later we'll look at the Y variable. So here we're just looking at, can we maximize the amount of utility we get from X? And so what we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to take the first derivative of this equation with respect to the X variable. We're going to do the partial derivative with respect to X. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this utility function and we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to X. 
So what we have to do is we have to do a derivative of the utility function with respect to x. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x. And what we would do is just follow simple power rule here. And what we could see is all of this stuff out here will zero out as x is not involved. And then we can simply take uh, x with the power rule. This is really x to the first. So we can do 1 times 400 gives us 400. And then we do 1 minus 1, and we end up with x to the 0 power, or we eliminate that x. And so what we have is when we do the basic calculus, 400x, when we take the derivative of that with respect to x, just becomes 400. And then we have to factor in this minus, and then the 10x squared. And 10x squared, we do that power rule there, and we can say 2 times 10, that's going to give us this 20. And then we have to subtract 1 from that exponent. So we're left with just x to the first power. And so we have the x here. All right, so make sure you can do that basic calculus. But this would be the partial derivative of u equals 400x minus 10x squared plus 100y minus y squared when you're doing that partial derivative with respect to x. So we're maximizing utility when this partial derivative is equal to zero, right? We're looking for the point when we are at a maximum of this function. So what we have is we have this function, this first derivative that we have set up. And what we're looking to see is when is the slope of that zero? When do we get to the point where we have a first order condition when we're maximizing the utility here. And so our next step is going to be to take that partial derivative and set it equal to zero. So we set this equal to zero and then we simply follow through steps of algebra to solve. So we can get 20x is equal to 400 and then divide both sides by 20 and x is equal to 20. So we could say, hey, all right, we know that we would be maximizing our utility in an unconstrained setup when x is equal to 20 given this utility function. So we have this as our outcome. We had the function that we created from taking the first derivative, and we are just basically plotting the different points from the equation. And then we take the first derivative and we set it equal to zero, and we can find this point right here. We have that local maxima. And so we can say, all right, x is maximized at this point 20. Now, we said we can follow up with this and try and make sure that it is definitely a maximum and not a minimum by utilizing the second derivative. To understand how the second derivative is used, let's create a new utility function here and kind of work through an example problem with really low numbers here. So imagine that this is our utility function, just u is equal to x to the 1 half power, right? So this is our utility function, and we want to think about what's happening here. This isn't a derivative, not a second derivative, nothing. This just is just our entire utility function that we have here. And we want to imagine what happens when we add more and more x. So what if x is 4 at this point, right? So what happens to our utility? Well, utility is going to be equal to two. So we're just taking the square root of four and we get utility is equal to two. Great. What if X is at five? So you can plug this into your calculator. You can say five to the one half power. You get a utility of 2.24. Okay, well, what if X is six? Well, plug that into your calculator. Utility comes back as 2.45. So if we're at uh, x equals 4 with our utility function, we said, okay, we have this utility equal to 2. And then we said, hey, if we keep increasing x, if we go up to 5, utility is going to go up. It's going to go up to 2.24. And then if we went all the way up to x equals 6, utility is still going up. It's going up to 2.45. And so from this, what we would see is if we graphed this out, we would say, okay, at any of these points here, the first derivative would be positive. We are increasing. The first derivative is telling us the direction the function is going. So as we're adding more x here with no constraint, 
what's happening is we're increasing our utility. That's what a positive first derivative would be telling us in this situation. It's telling us that the function is increasing. So utility is increasing as we're adding more X. When we do this setup, we said, okay, if we were at X, utility was two. And then if we're at X equals five, utility is 2.24. And then if we're at X equals six, utility is 2.45, right? What's happening here? Well, we started off at utility equal to two, but now you can see what we're analyzing is how much does our utility go up? Where our utility went up by 0.24 when we moved from four units of X to five units of X, it actually only goes up by 0.21 when we go from five units to six units. And so while we are increasing our utility two to 2.24 to 2.45, that is increasing. That's the first derivative. We are increasing at a decreasing rate. So this is going, has gone up more than this. So our rate at which we're increasing is going down. We're increasing at a decreasing rate. This is showcasing a negative second derivative. Our second derivative is less than zero. It's telling us the rate of change of the rate of change on a point in a graph, the slope of the slope, if you will. So what we're showcasing is the rate of change of the rate of change here, right? The amount that we have our slope, how fast is our slope increasing? Is it increasing at an increasing rate or is it increasing at a decreasing rate? And here we can see it increased and then it increased by less. And so it's increasing at a decreasing rate. And so our second derivative would be negative in this situation. That's exactly what we're looking for when we're trying to look to see was our first derivative equal to zero actually a maximized consumer outcome and not a minimized consumer outcome. Because remember, we could have a situation where, sure, we're showing a slope of zero is a maximum point, but we could also have a situation where our function looks like this and a slope of zero is a minimum point. And so if the first derivative is positive, that means that the function is increasing. And then the second derivative is showcasing that it's increasing at a decreasing rate. And so we can do a second derivative test to see if we're at that maximum point. So let's go back to our original setup. And here we have our first derivative. Our first derivative was 400 minus 20 X. And we said, oh, okay, you know, we could solve this and this is equal to zero when X is at 20. And that's the point that we would be maximizing utility, at least we think. But we want to just kind of do a double check here and make sure that this is a maximal point and not a minimal point. And this will matter more in more complicated equations and setups. Here, it seems kind of obvious, but we want to double check. So we need to take the second derivative. So we've already taken the first derivative with respect to X. Now we have to do the second derivative with respect to X. So now what happens? We can just, again, follow power rules. We have no X in this part of the equation. So that is going to just be gone. Then we're going to have to keep the minus sign because we do have an X here. It's X to the first power. So we can take that down one times 20. So we end up with this negative 20 here. And then we have to do uh, one minus one gives us zero. So the X is going to cancel out. So our second derivative, it's going to look like negative 20. So is our second derivative negative in this case? Yes, yes it is. So we've kind of double checked that we have this maximal point. The key to our Lagrangian approach is really gonna be that first derivative, but keep in mind this second derivative check that we can continue on with. So this video has shown us a setup for doing Lagrangian optimization, but all that we have done is done unconstrained optimization. We've solved for the optimal amount of X given the preferences that we had. We could do the same for Y, but now what we wanna do is look at a preference set, a utility function, and optimize it given some constraints. So we're gonna to turn to constrained optimization.